Okay. Okay. All right. Hello, this is Athena Jezik. I'm going to be working on Jessica today, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of work on the neck and the head and the shoulders, the upper shoulders, or upper chest and shoulders. So I hope you enjoy the work that I'm going to be doing. So we'll just get going here, first of all. Just going to loosen her neck. And I am going to be doing massage. I'm not going to be doing any other kind of work. So this is just a test to see how flexible the neck is. If there's any restriction, any kind of resistance in moving the head around. Bringing it up and turning. And then bringing it back down. I'd also like to thank some of the amazing Patreons that we have. Chris Park, Drew V, and Bob D. Thank you so much for your patronage. What I'm doing back here is just feeling for any tension in the neck. There's oftentimes a lot of tension that's carried in the neck. I'm going to apply a little bit of oil, just a very small amount. I'm going to brush that across the, the chest, the clavicles, and the shoulders, and then pull it up this way. Not quite enough. As some of you may know, um, I don't do a whole lot of massage anymore these days because I'm working on studying about the more subtle bodies that we have, which is just absolutely incredible when you start to look at the higher frequencies that we carry and the overlay with the um, different bodies that are basically energetic bodies, but they connect into the body. And it's a pretty fascinating study probably be figuring out how to share that with people in time. So I'm just taking a little thumb iron right along the back of the neck, close into the spine, doing it on both sides here. And there's not a lot of tension, really. Jessica's very relaxed, which is good. That's where you want to see your clients. Well, there's a little bit of tension over in this clavicle area. Uh, it's the erector spinae, where it's attaching into the clavicle on this side. So I'll be working to see if I can soften that up and get that out. I'm going to put just a little bit more oil on the front of her neck so I can show you some front of the neck things. There's so much going on in the front of the neck and it's a lot of delicate organs in there. So you want to be careful when you're working that part of the body. The sternocleomastoid muscle is one that you can get to. And sometimes you can even go behind it a little bit. You want to be sure that you go to both sides. Sometimes these muscles are very developed and it's you can even kind of grab them a little bit. I don't know if I can... There we go. I can get a hold of hers. And that way you're on both sides of the muscle while you're doing a little bit of very light um, and a petrissage and then of course the effrelage 
getting back into these shoulders. And then along the clavicles, there's attachments along the clavicles, so you want to be sure to address that. And then around these shoulders, there's a lot of small little areas here as well where the muscles come in. From some of the other videos that I've done, you may notice some of my technique has changed a little bit. And I think that's more because I've been working with subtle anatomy so much more lately that um, it kind of changes how I work on the muscular structure. And then we're just going to pull along these pectoralis muscles. down the arm and back up. You can take your hands and make kind of sweeping movements, bringing them out and then cupping around the shoulders and bringing your hands up into the neck, the fingers. It's nice to stay with continuity as you move with the body and move from one muscle group to the other. Kind of a smooth cadence. And you can take it in the opposite direction as well. So we'll take it back down and through and around those shoulders and then back up. Okay, so now that we have the neck nice and worked with the shoulders, I'm going to turn the head to the side and go a little bit deeper into these neck muscles. and also move it down into the shoulder. The, I'm coming right down onto the edge of the, of the clavicle. And then over here, same thing. You want to be able to hold their hair up and out of the way. Um, and be careful. Sometimes I've seen people, they just don't pay attention to the hair and oftentimes they'll end up pulling it. Sometimes it just happens because it just happens, but you want to be mindful not to be pulling their hair because that's kind of an uncomfortable thing to feel. So we're down into these muscles. Okay, let's see how I have enough oil to be able to manage through the face. Now along the jawline, you can get underneath the jawline and run the fingers along there. There's a lot of lymph, uh, there's a lymph chain under there, so that's something that you might feel. If you feel little bumps under there, it might be a lymph node. And around and down. And we're going to do a little bit on the chin. And then brushing up, going a little bit more into the cheek, up past the ear. Now you'd want to be pretty light on this. You don't want to push, especially around the temple area. That's not a very comfortable thing to do, to push hard on any of these uh, facial structures. Now here I'm pulling kind of a down and up motion. It's better to massage upward. And just feel all of that happen under your fingers. And you get into the nose, the nasal area. Go around that cheekbone, the zygomatic arch there. That's an area that you can even get a little bit deeper into. But again, you don't want to push. You know I'm a, not an advocate for a lot of deep work. I do understand there's importance to having a deep tissue work, but not all over the body. 
and also deep tissue should be done once you get the body prepared to that it's inviting you in you don't want to just barrel in there because the body will push back and there's been a lot of massage people that have caused some harm to their clients by being too deep too quick and of course I hear about it when it happens so just a little reminder slow down be a little bit patient more patience with with waiting on the muscles once you set up that triggering mechanism where the body's pushing back it's real hard to get it to, to slow back down because it's almost like breaking a trust bond and the body will think or subconsciously will be thinking that you know we're going to be hurt we're going to be harmed so that's going to be something for you to consider and this is just a little bit of of a little bit of a lymph technique you can pull the hands up this way and from the chin bringing it up this way and under the eyes you can get close to the eyes but not right on them and you'll feel the orbit the top the um, bottom side of the orbit and then you will work the upper part of the forehead here that's part of the orbit and around the bottom pulling it up and then the top follow that brow line but then take it with a turn and bring it up okay you can also work on the eyes by just simply pumping down over the eyelid very 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 gently this is more of a drainage kind of a technique but it does feel good to get the eyes a little bit the eye muscles a little bit worked and then the other thing you can do with the eyes is grab the eyeball very gently and then just rotate it slightly this is another draining technique but it's also working a little bit on those little muscles that the eyeball is held to to the bridge of the nose and then you can come down the nose around the nose here and down and through and up then across the forehead just kind of up you can dry the strokes down but have a little bit more of a pull as you come up but still make it very light and up. then you can go into the scalp now when you do the scalp you want to um, rotate the skin you don't want to just scratch the head you know like uh, a shampoo you don't want to do that you want to actually move the skin because there is a little bit of muscle under there it's very flat muscle uh, but you want to really get into that muscle and allow that muscle to be moved again you don't want to be heavy-handed with it the heavy-handedness really doesn't accomplish a lot it, deep tissue work should be done very directing and um, knowing what you're doing before you're digging in like I mentioned there's a lot of injury that does happen not only with that but with sometimes with stretching because um, there's not a lot of attention being paid to the alignment when you might be stretching a limb or even the neck so paying attention to the alignment is very very important it's much more important than we think I can tell you that for sure and do kind of that then you can kind of do uh, kind of a finger but again I'm on the muscle I'm not just like washing her hair 
so I'm in there in the muscle. And we'll just go to the top of the head with circular strokes. You can take the head and very gently roll it to the side and get the back of the head with the circular, moving all of that around. And then very gently keep that head cradled. And then you do the same thing on the other side. And then we'll set the head down. I like to pull the hair out because it kind of feels like it completes the movement of the head and you can go back down to the shoulders the clavicle and bring it all the way up again stretching it out okay then oftentimes you'll feel a lot of tension right along these the trapezius area the erector spinae area You'll feel a lot of tension in this area. We tend to pull our shoulders up when we feel like we're tired or stressed. So there's a lot of lifting of the shoulders, which will tense up these muscles. And again, it's nice to go both ways with it. Then with the clavicle, you can just kind of move the clavicle there's attachments on, on this bone. Come into the sternal, um, the uh, sternoclavicular joint area and work through that and a little bit up along the sternum. You're getting right down to the attachments here. What I've found over the years is that massage is a little bit more effective if the body has been aligned at the subtle level first. You have a little bit better uh, dealing with the muscles because they're actually laying on the proper position with the bones. Okay, and then around the shoulder, you can just kind of go around this shoulder area, the deltoid area. There's kind of three parts to that, so you just want to make sure that you're going along and then a little bit on the upper arm. Same thing on this side. Make sure that you get all that. And then you can get your fingers at the uh, clavicle, or excuse me, at the sternum. Go between those ribs and then pull very gently. But, you know, it's there's a little bit of depth there, but it's not anything that I've pressed myself into going deeper than what she's wanting or allowing. And go around the shoulder. So this will give you some different ideas for those of you that are therapists out there, different ideas for what you can do Or if you just want to do this for your friends or your family or your husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. It's a nice thing to do for each other. And then there's a little stretch of the neck that you can do where you're actually creeling the head and then you're bringing the head forward and then you're pushing up and letting so you're kind of working the neck here. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's you're here. And then as you start to go back, you put the fingers up and let it support the neck muscles about C, I don't know, four, five, six. And then I'm just gonna go around this way and sweep up 
and let it come down the hair. And that's about all you can do for this area. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, you can find more of it on the Patreon. If you want to know more about the subtle techniques or subtle anatomy uh, work that I do, you can check me out on my website. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again.